I got to tell you, there's a lot of churches out there with love in it that don't speak the truth. Right? But they, they're so good to each other, so warm. You know, they have revivals, they have picnics, they have social gathering, support groups, they go to their homes. They just have tremendous resources to do so many things. So I want to um, say that individually and collectively, we all have to be on our guard and make sure that the one thing that we demonstrate to any newcomer at all times is love. That is a fruit we have to display openly in the church. Would you agree with that? So, Ephesians, uh, I could give you many scriptures on that, but Ephesians 4.15 tells us, uh, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up into him in all things, which is ahead, even Christ. Uh, 1 Peter 2.12 tells us that we should have our conversation honest among Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. So even if they continue to, to do evil things, we must show good works. And then when God has his son revisit the earth, they'll remember, you know what? Let's give glory to God. Even sooner, when they have their time of trial on this earth, they may remember, when I saw the person from the church in trial, they continued to rely on Christ. Maybe I should turn to Jesus now. Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 10, 1, now I beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. Paul, who was in greater authority than the churches he visited, was base among them. And of course, base means that he brought himself to a very, very lowly estate. Paul probably acted the meekest of any when he visited the churches. This is the spirit we have to have. That's another fruit that they look for, meekness, humbleness. And we can joke about, you know, prideful things. Sometimes we do amongst ourselves, because we're all close and we're all family. But with newcomers in, let's exhibit the fruits of Galatians 5.22, which we all know so well, but I'll recap them to you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, number one. First fruit, love. Second fruit, joy. Third fruit, peace. Fourth fruit, long-suffering, which means patience. Fifth fruit is gentleness. Sixth fruit is goodness. Seventh fruit is faith. Have I mentioned obedience yet? So we've got seven fruits that come before even obedience. Meekness being the eighth fruit. Temperness, temperance being the ninth fruit. Against such there is no law, for if you bear all those fruits, you are not breaking the commandments. So these are the fruits that newcomers have to go by. These are the fruits we should exude as a body. And so when we look at sheep going out amongst the wolves, and we're going to be wise and cunning, the first thing we need to do is prepare ourselves and arm ourselves, because we know if we're not careful, even we ourselves will be devoured. We can be devoured different ways. We can be spiritually devoured by falling into the same envy, strife, malice, hypocrisy, backbiting, 
tattletaling, gossiping, as the wolves do. So we need to arm ourselves, and Ephesians, of course, tells us in chapter 6, the weapons that we use to arm ourselves. So arm yourselves, brothers and sisters. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, in verse 13, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, brothers and sisters, if we exude the fruits of the Spirit, they are, in fact, weapons which Satan cannot prevail against. And, you know, it, it convicts people's hearts when they see us under attack and we stand Christ-like like a sheep, like a dove, gentle, truthful, loving, honest, and speak back in with words of Christ, words from this gospel, that convicts people's hearts. Even the harshest wolves are going to be ready to shave their fur and put on something better. So I thought it was timely since we were doing so many things right now that we get ourselves spiritually in the mindset of having the right strategies. These are all things we know. I'm not telling you anything new. But I'm saying let's polish it up. Let's shine it up. Let's put a fresh coat of paint on. Let's make sure our hearts are right and our minds are sound and that we're prepared for really the task that we want to undertake. That we may be able to rightly build this temple for the Lord with lively stones. May God bless you.